partners um, I work in our retail and play business segment. I'm also on the board of CNBC operating and fund treasurer right now. Uh, and I'm with the University of Notre Dame is where I was introduced to new urbanism and why I'm interested in architecture and Dame's philosophy. Uh, a little more background for context is that I lived in Ecuador, Quito, for seven years before moving to the United States. Uh, this is a really dense, walkable environment. Uh, obviously, Houston is a very hard dependent environment. Uh, completely different worlds for me, and I lost sort of a sense of independence when that happened. As you can see in the top left here, this is where I lived in Ecuador on this park, and my school was right here. I could walk 15 minutes with my mom, my sister, and there would be a hospital, market, everything would be along the way. Meanwhile, in Houston, I moved to a classic quarter-side suburb neighborhood split by a highway to the Bell Center. So just to Give a little bit of timeline here. I graduated in 2019 and uh, got involved in the scene pretty quickly. I was hired on for retail and place making and got to do a lot of great base building architecture, uh, streetscapes, and you know, some of the newer stuff that I was very really excited about. And then COVID hit, and there had to be a bit of a shift as retail sort of declined for a little bit. And uh, I was in architecture buildings more, doing apartments, details, uh, CPS. Well, as discovery work, we'll talk about in a little bit, and some business development as well. All of those helped culminate when we finally arrived to doing mall repositioning projects. This was a new profit type for us, and it's been very exciting to be a part of that. As I was saying, Houston, I basically bought my independence. I would be independent when I get dropped off at the mall, or I get dropped off at the movie theater, and you know, being, a, being able to reposition those now is very personal. Me. So I'm going to show you guys a case study here at Hawthorne Mall. Uh, so here's the uh, footprint. It's obviously a huge parking lot with a huge building in the middle. Uh, there are some assets around that we like to connect into, which is Alvin Farm. Uh, but before we do any of that, we get into the discovery work, which I mentioned, and that is looking at uh, consumer demographics, how much money they're making, uh, what their background is, where they're spending their money both in the 10-minute and 30-minute drive time, so we're looking at different categories for their expenditures to understand who we're serving, as well as looking at the competition in the area. So uh, these are entertainment examples so that we can see if there's something that's missing that we want to bring, or as well as understanding what the cost per square footage is for apartments, what's the product in the what what's the structure is. Once we kind of go through that research, we set up the network of streets of parts of building and it helps us set up what to do in the future facing because this isn't something that happens in phase. We also use the research to figure out square footages of retail, residential, cinema, office, and what that means to the meet because it's a back here of the final phase. And I'm really just showing you this slide right now. I don't expect like it to get a lot from it necessarily, but the uh, phase one actually increases the retail count and part of that is you don't want to make people feel like they're living in the mall or the parking lot. So you want to make a splash in that phase one and it's sometimes important to bring retail to activate those public spaces in the first phase. But then by the end of the street, we're at 20% of the total retail count of what the mall originally had. So a lot more residents, a lot more uh, other uses. So I'm just going to go through the phasing. Uh, here you see the mall and that first splash of the uh, phase one. And as other parts of the mall, other boxes come down, we're able to you know, decommission parts of the mall, fill in parking lots, uh, and add some garages potentially. And that continues. I'm just going to slide through pretty quickly. But uh, the Greenwood does stay maintained usually for a, a while on these mall projects uh, until the big box stores are. Decommission and they no longer have lights to have their green road basically, and we phase that out and we basically find the ones we allows us to pull transformation. Uh, so I just want to get into the big one a little bit more. This is the parking area for the box coming out. We put in the retail around the corner of residential above the parking, and then we look at the public space program. We want to make sure that things can happen here, uh, they feel like a community, and they have to have the front door from all of Here's the concept and then this is the, the idea of the heat of the field and the atmosphere. And we've had the opportunity to do this all over. Um, and it's not just you know your shopping mall, but also shopping center, the institution town center, and 
recently offices, we got to work in Sarasota. And uh, this is an office building that we can use a lot of things. It's piece of about repositioning that we've learned from malls and use it in repositioning. This office, uh, you know, I'm personally very excited about the fact that the reps are back. And so uh, being in person, engaging with the community, and helping to build in something that can be a little bit challenging the big downtown footprints, the small parts, small footprints, and finessing the neighborhood there. Uh, hopefully, you guys are doing a good sense of job with these footprints and you'll see the massing uh well just a lot of taxes but you'll, you'll see the massing uh and steps down to the neighborhood and steps up in downtown on Raymond Road from the neighborhood to Sarasota and uh yeah for me it's been very exciting so I have not been on those interacts due to COVID situation as well um so that's pretty much it and I would just say you know my my path, especially with COVID, is going to be a different crisis for everybody's path, but you don't know exactly where you're going to end. And being resilient, that is, as Shania said, uh, just staying passionate, uh, staying connected to the community of people that are doing the type of work you're inspired by, uh, and eventually you might need to do work that is personally 